Hello lad mates, it's mailbag time. This is what I've got. I've got some review items in here to appear, which will be in this thing. First thing, got a few packages from Oreos, so I'll get all those out of the way first. If I can get into them. These are some LEDs. I got this for my Datron project, which you may or may not have seen. I don't know, maybe it's around this time anyway. Probably going to be a future video. I'm not quite sure if it's future or past from this one. Uh, yeah, time travel wasn't great. Now, the LEDs here I've got, these are orange, both of them are orange, and they're um, 0805 size and 0603 size. Now, these are the Datron, so we're using these for the enunciator displays, hopefully, if it works. Here is the um, actual display over here, which I built. This is 3D printed, I've got a black frame, and I've got translucent letters, and I've painted around them to try and make it stand out. Whether this works or not, I actually don't have a clue. It may or may not work. I don't know. I won't know until I try it. But anyway, these are LEDs to try and light those things up. Fingers crossed it works. If not, I've got a backup plan. Another RS package. 0.56 inch SMD LED displays. There we go. These are also for the Datron. So these are red. I couldn't get orange straight away. They're on back order. Can't get those till next year. And there's the information there. KCSA 56-105. 105 means red. So like I said, these are also for the Datron project. So I've got a stock of these. I don't actually need this many. Not in one go, but I thought, well, if I'm going to get some and it works, then I'll build a second display and have a spare one because I'll keep buying these Datrons and fixing them. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's a project which you'll see soon-ish. Last Iris package. At least I think it is. We'll see if no one turns up today. These also seven segment displays. Yeah, the orange one's currently out of stock until February next year. That's what's anticipated anyway. That's the orange. These are green ones. So these are the same as the first lot. Oh, it's covered, all covered up by the stickers, aren't they? But these are green ones instead. Similar, uh, different brand, I think. I think it's a different brand. So these are the same size. KCSA 56-123. One, two, three means green. So I've got a choice of colours. So if the red doesn't work, I might use green instead. But um, I think the red's going to be better than uh, the green. Don't know, we'll find out. Let's see what's in here. Make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed and that sort of stuff. Click the bell icon if you like uh, seeing notifications about videos because otherwise you won't get them. And also give us a thumbs up if you like the videos. So these are some 2.1 inch. It's 2.1 inch. I'm talking to inches now because these displays. These are 2.1 millimeter DC jacks. I'm trying to tidy up some of the wiring in the motorhome and um, I've got this like multi way spider thing which is making a mess it's all quite short so give me a scram together so i bought a bunch of these thinking oh it'll be handy and now i'm going to redesign it so i probably don't even need them but um i probably will use these for something likely we'll still need them just to tidy things up links for these down below so i think these are 50 centimeter cables there you go it's a bit of a close-up view of what they look like got a strain release on them fairly rigid strain relief but there is something better than nothing this one i already opened because i was thinking it's something else but actually no it wasn't we got a cleaning cloth. I didn't actually buy the cleaning cloth, but they seem to come with it. It's a nice cleaning cloth, I suppose. Be handy. Didn't buy it for that. What if what's in here? Which is surprisingly well packed. I'm just this actually caught me out by surprise that I wasn't expecting this. Made in Korea. Potentiometers. This is the one. So these are actually marked as 50k. The standard 50k part short spline shaft. There you go, now can you see what I'm talking about? So there you go, short spline shaft, 50k. Again, for stock, but I was quite surprised by these individually packed like this. Usually just get like a bunch of them chucked into a little plastic bag. They sort of say quality to me, actually. That's what it said in the bag for this little cloth thing. Present. Why, oh, thank you very much. This, I think I know what's in here. I've got this box and I've got another big one, which is the repair item which I purchased. Presumably a repair item, we'll see what that is in there. This is kind of expected. Some of it's expected, some of it I don't know. You'll see what I mean once I get into it. If I get into it. <laughs> We have some PCBs, which are from PCBWay. This is my Datron project. I have a collection of rulers, which I accumulated as gifts from PCBWay. Just add them onto the cart as they became available. So a few little PCB rulers. They're always handy things to have, scattered around the place. We have some Christmas gifts. Um, oh, there's another ruler. This one, another red one. And there's some little Christmas light things for Christmas, you know. It's a little Christmas pack gift from PCBWay. Have a Christmas tree light to go on a tree. Some kind of paradox here. Is it? Now there's the ones that look at 2032 batteries, I think they take. And we've got Gingerbread Man, Salvador Riccardi, designed that one apparently. Sorry about the reflections, I won't get them out just yet. 
Salvador Riccardi. Little things to put in a Christmas tree, so I'll have to get some batteries to put these in the tree and that'd be good. Christmas lights. These, these have some like quite patterns and I think they're like uh, colour changing LEDs quite often. So I haven't got any batteries for these right now to go and get some so I can actually try those out. We've got a stencil. So this is a stencil for these boards, I won't bother showing you that just now, but this is sponsored by PCWay in a way, but this is for our Datron project, which will be sponsored by them as well, so I'll just feature them in here too, so thank you much PCWay for the pre PCBs and the Christmas gift bag. Let's have a look at these PCBs. Get one out. This is what I designed, version one. I don't know if it works yet. It's not quite 2021, but almost is, so that's why I've put a date on it. So this is my board. So the idea here is obviously you put those service mount LEDs, which I hope you have got the right packages and everything for, They'll go on here, make a couple of digits, and I've got the individual LEDs, these ones, they are 603s, those 603s will go on here, and over here, so this does the plus and minus symbol, and this does all the enunciators, as you can see, as I've, as I've got labelled on here. Whether this part works yet, theoretically it should all work, uh, it requires some conversions to the actual Datron to make it work, relatively minor conversions actually, it's quite simple to modify it, in theory, and over here I've got some switching transistors over here, this is for the plus and minus symbol to do some, because they're driving four LEDs instead of just individual segments, like you get on these, because it does multiplex display, so these are being switched as well. That's part of the Dash On project, so you'll see that soon. Again, thanks so much PCBWay. Currently PCBWay are actually doing a promotion as well, I should mention all this, because this is going to be out in time. They've got a promotion until the end of December, I think they're doing some special on pricing or some of that. They're doing some big promotion, I, I don't remember the details of it, but if you go to the website, it's got this nice purple page, you'll see it all. Christmas promotion they're doing. Make sure you go and check out PCBWay's link down below for their pr Christmas promotion, I'll put a link down, down there, and um, save yourself some money. I've always been happy with PCBWay, they've been really good quality, anything I've ever had from them has always been really good, I've never had any problems, not once. Have I had a problem? In fact, they've caught my mistakes more than once, <laughs> to be honest. It's not this time, I actually got it right this time. But the last couple of, I think the last projects I did with the voltage divider, I made a couple of mistakes and I picked up a couple of things, which is great. Anyway, so make sure you go and check out the promotion because that's quite important that they've sent me this gift pack here and these little bits and pieces to help promote the Christmas promotion as well. So go and check that out. I might put a screenshot in up here or something, up there. Let's see if I can get into this thing. quite tough tape on it looks like. Oh, not quite. Well it looks like it's well packaged. If I can get the rest of the tape cut, I'll be back. Give them a power cord which is US cord. No good to me but that's okay. Maybe handy if I ever get something to weigh to someone that's in the US. Uh, oh, well it's ish packaged. Okay top top's well protected. The rear end Yes I know I critique packaging. It's quite an important aspect when you buy a bit of test gear to not have it arrive broken, that the packaging is of sufficient quality. Now right here, that is the back of the chassis hitting against the box. Um, just here and there. I think the box may be a bit small. Hopefully the front of the chassis doesn't have the same problem. The front seems like it's well protected. Yeah, the front's been pretty well protected. They've done a bit more effort on the front than the back. It's got extra layer bubble wrap around it. Yeah, okay. I suppose I can say that's a barely death on proof. That's not protected well enough here, but yeah, they've made an effort. Didn't quite follow the instruction, at least two inches of protection all the way around it. But yeah, and it's about wrap on the bottom, I suppose. So yeah, right, I'll be back on to what this out. Can you guess what it is yet? This may or may not be a repair item, we shall see. Here's the back. Record Dana. It's a bit longer than a standard record Dana, as you can see, because it's a bit of a special one. Well, it's the first time I've seen this particular model before. I haven't seen this one come up before, so you know I grabbed it. It's a 2101 microwave counter. So it has three inputs. There's the connector for the high frequency one, up to 20 gigahertz. So it's a half a gigahertz, I think it means, not half a megahertz, I'm not sure. I haven't actually checked the manual. So we've also got the 10 hertz to 80 megahertz. 40 to 1300 megahertz here as well. So it's a pretty universal one. Same form and fact as the other ones. Check the buttons. The buttons seem right. Should we try powering it on? I think we should. So available voltage is stated down the side here. It's currently set for 120 volts AC, so I'm gonna swap that out. Make it uh, local voltage. So I'm gonna set it for 240, and we'll power it up. See if it works. 
So this has a pretty unique way of setting the, the uh, voltages up. It's got this little door here which you just prise open, it swings open. And you've got this dial here and you just change the voltages on this. So whichever voltage you want you just flick it around and it activates the switch. There you go. Done. How's that for clever? Very interesting design. Must check the fuse too. I'm so excited about doing that voltage setting. There's a little comment in here about remove drum before turning. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Anyway, so I pulled the fuse out and it's got a 500 milliamp fuse in there, so it's not too bad. I don't have any 250s right now. This I do have some somewhere. I have to dig them out. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I will change it later on. But this is not something like a 2 amp fuse or something like that. So we'll put the drum back in again with the right voltage. I don't know why it says you can't do it in place. I don't know. It didn't seem to cause any problems. It wasn't like it's sticking. You know, I'll put it back in, in the right way around. 240 volt. Like that. Put that back up and hopefully it will shut. There we go, 240 volt AC. Let's go try it out. Okay, power cord is plugged in, it has power applied. You can see we've got 225 volts or so over here, so it's slightly below, but I do tend to run things on the lower side. Let's push the power button for the first time. What happens? Ooh, it boots. It's got a nice fan in there. <laughs> so that's done in three sections, that's interesting. Is that gigahertz, megahertz, hertz, or something? I don't know. No idea. So. We've got a frequency selection here, frequency C, frequency B, frequency A, check, there you go, 10 megahertz check, okay, ratio, ratio again, ratio again, back to C. So I'm going to try out A and B, I'll hook up my Marconi to this and just generate some frequencies to check A and B, I don't know if I can do this one, we'll have to see if I can hook into it, I probably can, and we'll see if we can get some frequencies. Right, I've hooked it to input A. My currently turned on, but it's kind of got a really low output level. Let's go 0.5 volt. There we go, 0.5 volts. Now the frequency is probably not going to be accurate because it's only turned on. It's got enough nice oscillator in it, I think. And my Marconi is also only just turned on, so frequencies are going to be drifting around. But I've got it set for 26.5 megahertz. That's also kilohertz, hertz, millihertz. When do I want to take the warm up and settle down? That'd be curious to find out. So I'm currently injecting 10 millivolts, and it's working on that. Let's keep going. Let's go 5 millivolts. It's still triggering, but it's getting a bit erratic now. So there we go. So 10 millivolts back to there. And that's there. So like 10 millivolts seems to be like the bottom end of that one. Okay, let's change to channel B. It's always nice to know what your limits are on bits of gear. Want to find out what they are. So channel B, still on 10 millivolts. And it's still counting. Okay, let's go. Let's just increase the level slightly in case it's got a counting error. I just want to see if it jumps. So 10 millivolts. I'm going to do 50 millivolts now. It did jump, but that's okay. That's the tenuator clicking in, I think. But it's pretty much the same thing, isn't it? Let's go back down to 5 millivolts. Still counting. So 5 millivolts is working there. 2 millivolts. Still counting, but erratic. It's not quite right. So you're jumping around too much. I think we could say 10 millivolts on that one there as well, most likely. Obviously, it's all warming up and settling down. Everything's over the place, so I'm not going to worry about the actual readings right now. That's looking reasonable so far. Let's check out channel C. In fact, before we go to channel C, let's do some high frequency stuff and run these things. So I can do 1 gigahertz on my cone, so I can do 1 gigahertz, we'll see what comes out here. And this one does 80 megahertz, so I'll do the same on this one. And just make sure they can read those frequencies okay at the upper end. And then I'll do the last channel. So there we go, it's 1 gigahertz input at 10 millivolts, and that's reading that. You can do up to 5 volts on here on the input on this one. I think they're both the same. It's actually creeping upwards again now, looks like it is. So it's stabilising, which is good. I'm going to change onto this channel, see if we can get out of that one. So I've got my generator set at 100 megahertz, and it's actually reading that, even though it's rated at 80 megahertz. You usually do get like a minimum rating, then it will potentially read incorrectly above that. So let's just try 120, just go up a little bit at a time. 120 is reading that, 150, yep, yeah, can read that. That's doing pretty well, it's almost double its rating. 160, no, it's still there. 170, it's doing that too. Okay, let's go straight to 200, what does that do? No, can't do 200, okay. 180, yes. So you know, it says 80 megahertz, more like 180 megahertz. That's all right. Okay, let's check the last one. I was going to to input C. Now this has got an operating max level of 7 dBm, damage level of 25 dBm. Now 7 dBm is about half a volt. So I have to make sure I stay below that to be safe. So frequency C. I'm currently on 180 megahertz still. I'm doing a 100 millivolt level. So because it says 0.5, I think I need 500 megahertz. So we'll do that, we'll go up to 500, see if it picks that up, nothing yet. Okay, let's do uh, 1000 megahertz, 
so one gigahertz nothing yet okay so maybe this channel here is the problem on this unit that may be the case let's increase the IF level a little bit let's go to 300 millivolts still nothing okay I would expect that to be sensing so it says you know half a volt max well I'm putting in 300 millivolts which means that should be well within sensing range so it looks like channel C is what's wrong so that should be working and it isn't well it looks like I do have repair items so channel C is definitely not sensing anything at all so that's good I've got repair to do problem is it's on this really high frequency run and that may not be repairable I guess we'll find out when I go to do the repair so make sure you watch out for that repair on my main channel it could be interesting certainly challenging so thanks PCWay for the free boards and the Christmas gifts and make sure you go and check out the promotion down below check the link out down below go and check that out it's until the end of December so make sure you go and jump on that as quickly as you can not much time left check out my main channel for my project for the Datron I'll be doing this video very soon I'll probably be in live streams I may have even done a live stream on it already by the time you see this video go and check it out thumbs up subscribe if you're not already subscribed click the bell icon you know ring that bell and stuff like that thanks on Patreons get you later